Jordana, good to have you with us this morning. So what now? Is there any hope that some kind of deal can still be reached? What else can we take from Netanyahu's latest remarks? Well, Secretary of State Antony Blinken gave a, a presser last night uh, here in Israel, and he is still holding on to some hope that the sides can hash out a deal, even if this round seems to have been uh, a defeat. We can say that for sure. Uh, he said that he still sees what he calls spaces for agreement in the uh, Paris framework. And he admitted that Hamas put on the table a lot of demands that were, quote, non-starters for Israel. But Blinken is not giving up. He says he's still going to, you know, try to hash out an agreement. Um, but of course, this is a setback for Blinken and the White House. Uh, they've been working for weeks on trying to get Hamas and Israel to agree, even on the initial phases of a longer deal. In other words, just the first maybe five or six weeks of a ceasefire that would see some of what are called the humanitarian cases uh, when it comes to the hostages, those, those hostages released. For example, the civilian women and the elderly uh, and uh, the sick or injured. But um, that is not going to happen. Uh, Benjamin Netanyahu really dismissing Hamas's demands, calling them delusional, saying that if Israel were to agree to them, it would essentially be a surrender to Hamas. Uh, and we can see uh, where the Israeli prime minister is coming from. Hamas did not agree in any way, shape, or form to relinquish control of the Gaza Strip to any other governing body. Uh, it looked as if they were just trying to find a way out so that they could regroup and rebuild. Uh, and that, of course, is unacceptable to Israel. And by the way, also unacceptable to the United States. You know, there was an interesting question last night in Blinken's presser from a reporter from Al Jazeera who said, you know, can you tell us what or how you see Hamas's role in, uh, you know, the, the in a post-war uh, Gaza, in the U.S.'s vision for Gaza after the war? Will there be a role for Hamas? How does Washington relate to Hamas? And the response from Blinken was simply no. He didn't even go into the question or explain. He just said, no, there's no role for Hamas. And so, you know, Washington still backs Israel's war against Hamas. Um, but Blinken, of course, also uh, said that they made their concerns, you know, well known to the Israeli leadership, not only Netanyahu, but defense officials, that they need to do more to protect civilian life, that they need to get more aid in. Once again, Blinken mentioned that the U.S. wants to see the Arabs crossing open. That is the crossing uh, on the north, the northern crossing into the northern Gaza Strip, where we have to say aid barely reaches. Uh, and so Blinken and, and Blinken also said that Israel needs to make sure that even though there was so much cruelty and dehumanization of Jews and Israelis on October 7th, that Israel has to be careful not to do the same. He didn't exactly uh, detail what he was referencing, but we can assume part of it are those uh, many pictures we've seen on social, video, on social media, posts of, pal of Palestinians in the Gaza Strip, those who surrendered, who seem to be, you know, in very, um, you know, disrespectful uh, positions as they are, you know, stripped naked, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And, it, and the United States has constantly said they don't think these kinds of social media posts help and that the army needs to do more to stop them. And Israel has also uh, condemned them, but they continue. They continue to be out there. Um, so Lincoln's going home. Hopefully he made more progress on dealing with the conflict in the north, on Israel's northern border, uh, the United States working to carve out diplomacy there to prevent the war from spreading. And maybe uh, Blinken made some more progress with Netanyahu on the U.S.'s vision for post-war Gaza, which does include a Palestinian leadership role. Now, in his remarks yesterday, Netanyahu also confirmed that he's going to be ordering troops to move towards Rafah. What can we expect there, Jordana? Right. Well, the Rafah border crossing is where Hamas is still very strong. It has several 
uh, brigades there that have not uh, really been in combat with the Israeli army yet. It is seen as one of the places that Israel needs to reach in order to fully uh, dismantle Hamas's uh, fighting capability. There's also a lot of cross-border tunnels in this area, and Israel uh, wants to take control of all or part of that border to try to destroy and prevent the smuggling of weapons and militants back into Gaza after this war. It does present a number of problems. Number one, there are 1.2 million Gazans in this area that have fled from other parts of the Gaza Strip. And the Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, said that he discussed with Israel the need to protect these civilians. In other words, uh, and he laid out certain measures, Israel needs to um, move some of these civilians out of the area, give them safe passage before a very heavy, before launching a very uh, intense military uh, bombardment of Rafah. That's also an area that could present diplomatic problems for Israel because it may violate some of the agreements Israel has with Egypt if Israel intends to hold that part of the, the Gaza side of the Egyptian border.